Hey, welcome back friends. Today's video is one I don't really want to do, but I think you guys deserve it as viewers and subscribers to the channel. This is six different items, RV related items, that I've had a negative experience when it comes to reviewing them. So the company reaches out, asks me to review their product. I tell them I'm happy to do so, and the outcome wasn't so great. So six different items that I haven't had a great experience with. Again, I don't like making negative videos. I don't like drama. Hopefully you'll see this is not dramatic or anything like that. But again, you guys deserve to hear it. I hope you'll stick around. All right, let me start by explaining what I mean in that intro. So there are a lot of companies at this point that reach out to me and offer me products to review. And I'm happy to do that. And But not all of those reviews obviously work out well. And so I reach back out to them and say, hey, this didn't work or that didn't work. And I generally don't make a video about it because I want to give those those manufacturers or those sellers an opportunity to improve their product. And I, I hate drama, I hate negativity, and I just don't feel like throwing products under the bus just for YouTube views. It's just not my style. I think it would get great views if I were throwing things under the bus and just blasting these products. But like I said, there's people working behind the scenes marketing those products and manufacturing those products. Not that my channel would be a huge detriment, we're not that size of a channel, but at the same time, it's just not my style. That said, my main concern is you, the viewer, you, the subscriber, and I do think there are times where I need to be very clear with you guys about products I've had negative experiences with, and that's why we're doing this video today. I'm, I'm, I'm grouping them all into this video. Again, like I said, I don't want to make some big, long video putting some product on blast, and I, there's going to be explanations behind all of these products, but here are six products that I've had a negative experience with, RV, RV items I've had a negative, negative experience with. All right, let's start with the first one, and these are in no particular order whatsoever, but the first one is Waggle Pet Monitoring System. So Waggle reached out to me probably about a year ago and asked me to review their pet monitoring system. And when companies reach out to me, my first thought is, okay, would I actually use that product? Uh, yes or no. Two, is it worthwhile to bring to you guys, to our audience? And I, while I don't think, I didn't think we would actually use Waggle much, I did think it was worthwhile bringing to you guys. I think there are a lot of folks out there interested in this product. So I agreed, I said, yeah, actually send me one, that sounds great. And they did. Well, part of Waggle is you have to buy a subscription, a monitoring subscription. That was something that we probably wouldn't do and was something I was a little uncomfortable to ask you guys to do. But again, people would probably be interested in that. You know, fur babies are important. We just don't leave Tallulah in the RV long enough to really worry about it. And so they sent me a, a unit. Long story short, I can never get it to work. Um, the unit would work. It would connect to my app on my phone, but it would never update. And so we troubleshooted and troubleshooted. I contacted Waggle a few times and they told me to do a few things to troubleshoot. Nothing ever worked. Um, I reset the unit, I reinstalled the app, all of those things they tell you to do, and I just couldn't get it to work. Uh, I mean, I can't remember whether or not they offered to send me another one, maybe I had a bad unit or not, but regardless, we, we just kind of cut ties and went about our own ways. Now, in Waggle's defense, there are a lot of great reviews for Waggle. So please, don't let my one experience ruin your research, uh, but you should know that I had a negative experience with it. So Waggle's the first one on the list. Next product on the list that's RV related that I was asked to review and I just had a negative experience with, that would be the Zero Breeze battery powered air conditioner. This is an expensive unit. These, these units run anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars depending on what size battery you get and I was, you know, when they offered to send me one, I was humbled a little bit. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, send me one. I'll, I'll see what it'll do. And um, it's just not there yet. The thing just is not powerful enough to do much of anything. If you were in like a backpacking tent, a tiny little backpacking tent, you could figure out a way to fit this thing in the tent. Uh, maybe it would cool that off or maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny pop-up with no pop-outs. I, I, I don't know, but... Uh, you'd have to have a real a teardrop maybe a teardrop camper it might work but um 
Other than that, it's just not powerful enough to make a difference in any type of weather. And then you have these vent tubes you have to get outside of the tent. The biggest pain in the butt was the condensation drain. You had a drain hose for the condensation that had to leave the tent somehow. You had to elevate the unit and then make sure the gravity was working in your favor. If you didn't do that, the condensation would pool around the unit. And then even, even still, the condensation hose really wasn't long enough and you'd have a big pool of water right outside your tent. It just it just wasn't it just wasn't powerful enough. It, it had pretty good battery life, but still it, it just it just didn't do the job. And so I just told them, hey, it's, you, you know, you just it's just not there yet. It's a great idea. I hope you can figure it out. But yeah, I'm not going to do a video on it just because it's just not a good product right now, in my opinion. Uh, you'll find some people that say that it'll knock off a couple of degrees. Yeah, maybe, but for two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, depending on the battery you get. I just didn't feel like it was that great of a product. So zero G or zero breeze AC. We'll get to the zero G here in a second. But zero breeze AC is another product I just have a good experience with. All right, next on the list, and this one kind of hurts my heart a little bit because I love my folks over at Lippert. I love my folks over at Kurt. But the the uh, Kurt Better Way uh, weighing system, the Better Way system. It's it's a little product that you plug into your truck's computer, and it's supposed to give you your truck's weight, your hitch weight, your trailer weight. I just couldn't get mine to work. It was very inaccurate for me. Uh, I was even on the phone with some of the engineers at Kurt trying to figure out if I was calibrating it correctly, which in itself, it's not that big of a deal. You just accelerate it three quarter pedal and you slow down. Anyway, it's not a big deal to calibrate it. And it shouldn't be that big of a hassle to calibrate. Um, because if, if the masses are using it, it needs to be easy to calibrate, right? And so uh, I just never could get it to work. It was thousands of pounds off on my truck. And yeah, I just, I wish it would work because I think it would be a great tool. Then that they may have done improvements since then. They haven't sent me another one to test in quite some time. This was almost two years ago that I tested the better way. And it was just so far off, I wouldn't bring it to you guys because of a safety hazard. Um, but yeah, it just didn't work for me. Others, maybe it's worked for them, but I, the problem was I knew my weight and it was almost 2,000 pounds off. And so that was a big problem for me. But yeah, the better way from Kurt, I just didn't have a good experience with. Next on the list is a product that I actually thought I did like for a while until I tested a lot of its competitors. And that is the Blue Ox Sway Pro Weight Distribution Anti-Sway, Sway Reduction, whatever you're gonna call it, Hitch. This was one of those things I got sucked into social media, I got sucked into the Facebook groups, and everyone was, the hot hitch to buy at the time was the Blue Ox Sway Pro. I don't know because of the saddles look cool on it or because it's a little bit different design. Blue Ox is generally a good name brand, quality name brand. Uh, they've had good customer service when I've had to use them. But it's just the worst performing hitch I've used. It's barely better than no nothing. I mean, that's just, that's just the truth. Now, their Track Pro, I think, is a much better product. And then uh, I've tested seven hitches. It's by far the worst. And I hate to say that again because the fine folks at Blue Ox, uh, they're good people. Uh, I did have, I had a problem with one of the saddle stripping. They told me this long story about they produced their saddles and wrenches in two different manufacturing facilities. And you had to make sure you got the wrench from the same facility that the saddles were made. And if you got flip-flop, they might strip out. Mine did strip and they, they did replace them. So that was good. But so yeah, I just did not have a good experience with it. And come to find out, it doesn't perform that great compared to other hitches in my situation as, my, as far as my truck and trailer is concerned. So yeah, the Blue Ox Sway Pro, I don't recommend it anymore. Uh, I probably should take that video down to be quite honest with you. But hopefully you guys that follow the channel have kind of, that you've kind of gotten the hint that I'm not a huge fan anymore. Next on the list, and this is kind of a long story here, but maybe you'll stick with me, is Zero G Hoses. Holy cow, I, um, where do I start? Let me start, well, I will start on a positive note. I love how easy Zero-G hoses are to deal with. They're lightweight, they fold up easily, they roll up easily, super easy, and they're just perfect design for an RV situation. They pack away easily and small and light, and they just, it, you would think they would be perfect. Every single one of them I've owned have leaked, and I'm gonna go into that in just a second, but. I started off with, made a couple videos. One of the few negative videos I've made out there was about zero G hoses, how they failed. 
uh, as far as at the coupler and they were leaking. Then I made another video to get your warranty on a zero G hose. They, they ask you to cut the ends off of your hose and take, show them pictures of that to prove you're just not trying to get another hose. So when I did that, I realized there was tons of mold and mildew inside my zero G hose. I did a video about that. They saw that and Techner Apex, who, who builds and manufactures the Zero-G hose, they reached out to me. They asked me in an email, hey, we saw your video. Would you be willing to send us that moldy and nasty hose? Well, I had thrown it away. Why would I have kept it? And so anyway, long story short, I offered to work with them. They sent me several Zero-G hoses, four or five, six of them. They even made me, at the time, what was the only two four-foot zero-G hoses in the world. They specially made two of them. They, they knew, I explained to them how I like to have a short four-foot hose um, attached to my, in, inside my pass-through that's permanently attached there. So I'm not, you know, I'm not screwing in and unscrewing that, attaching un, and, and removing that all of the time. I, I was saving wear and tear on my actual fitting inside my pass-through by having this four-foot hose always there. Then I'd pass that four-foot throat hose down the bottom of my RV, and that's where I would attach. And so when I told them that, they're like, hey, we'll make you some four-foot hoses. Long story short, all of the hoses have leaked, and they've all leaked at the coupler. I've never even used my four foot hoses because I have zero confidence in them that they won't leak. I just can't have a hose leaking in my pass through for obvious reasons. Um, so uh, there are times I'll still use a zero G hose if it's all of it's outside of the rig, but otherwise I will not use them. They've all leaked. I've had terrible experiences with them. Zero G really, your Techno Apex hasn't reached back out to me. And so I guess they just don't have any interest in what I, what I have found or haven't found. But they did make an attempt to make it right, but I think once they realized that all of the, I don't, I don't know what I do to hoses. I, I, I explained to them how I store them. I explained to them, some people were saying to run bleach through them or hydrogen peroxide through them. They said to never do that. You should never need any chemicals in your hoses, that I was storing them appropriately. I shouldn't have to do anything more than what I was doing. And so, yeah, I'm not sure why I've had such bad luck with zero G hoses but I have, I will not use them in a situation where a leak would be detrimental. All right, last but certainly not least is, and this one has a huge asterisk next to it. So maybe is least actually. I mean, this one, this one is last and least. And this one has a huge asterisk next to it because uh, mattress comfort is such a personal thing. And so, uh, yeah, this is just uh, something I didn't have a good experience with, but this is such a personal situation that, you know, I, I'll talk about it here. It's the Thomas Paine mattress. So Thomas Paine, our friends over at Thomas Paine, they started building a mattress about a year ago. And uh, yeah, it's just way too firm for our liking. And by our, I mean myself and Brooke. Now, Brooke's mom has one and she really likes it. And I've got some contacts at Lippert that were, have been very, you know, they're, they're straight up folks. They're great folks at Lippert. And a lot of them like it. Sincerely, they like it. Not just because Lippert owns Thomas Paine or whatever. But uh, yeah, so it's a good mattress. It's well built. It had quick shipping. All of that was good. It, we just didn't prefer how firm it was. So, I, you know, I, that's why it has a huge asterisk next to this last one. It was a negative experience because we didn't sleep well and, and uh, yeah, it was just real firm. But um, yeah, still, if you like a firm mattress, I can definitely recommend a Thomas Paine, a very firm mattress. But for us, it just, we don't like them that firm. We like supportive, we like firm, not quite the Thomas Paine firm. So anyway, I did feel like I need to put it on this list because again, it was a native experience, but it's certainly not the same as the rest of these products. Okay, friends, there you go. Six products, six RV related products that uh, I had negative experiences when reviewing them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you appreciate the candidness here. Uh, I think it's important that I do these every once in a while. I'll start compiling the next list and hopefully it'll be a while before I get six more products or five more products that I had bad experiences with. Most of the products we get are pretty darn good and that's why I don't mind bringing them to you. Um, yeah, there you go. So I tried to do this as, as, as positively as I could and I hope you enjoyed the information and at least let this be part of your education when you're researching your RV products to buy. I hope you guys found it useful and as always, consider subscribing. See ya.